my name is Sean Walker. I'm a Principal Product Success Architect and part of the Ranger team here at ServiceNow. Today I'm going to be talking to you about stock rooms. So today we're going to cover what stock rooms are. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the fields and the types, and then I'll do a demo of creating a stock room. So stock rooms identify locations in which inventory items are stocked and tracked. Uh, all available stocks of so consumables, hardware assets, um, they all should be managed in stock rooms within your organization. Uh, many of the flows that are built into hardware asset management really do leverage these stock rooms. So it's really essential that they're configured properly. Stock rooms are, are part of the actual base asset management feature of ServiceNow. But as I said, like many of the workflows in HAM, uh, like disposal order, loaner order, etc., they all leverage those stock rooms. So the different fields that are available on the stock room form would be um, the name, which is the display name of the stock room. So you're going to want to use relevant names when you're creating that stock room. So for example, if there are multiple stock rooms in the same building, then you might want to specify the building name or even a floor number that that stock room is on just to help you easily identify it. The assignment group field, that's the group that uh, typically uses the stock room. So say maybe your um, IT support would be a big user of that stock room. The location, that's the physical location of the stock room. So you're going to want to make sure that that stock room is, is aligned with your actual locations in service now. Um, you're also going to might want to take a look at location hierarchy. Um, that's something that came out a little while ago. Um, and you're going to want to make sure that that's configured in your instance because it can really help with things like service locations, which is something we cover in, in a different video. There's also the type of stock room, like a field agent or on site, but we're going to talk more about that in the next slide. Uh, and then the manager field, that's the person in charge of the stock room. Um, they're the ones who are going to receive all of the notifications and requests for things like stock rules. So you're going to want to make sure that the manager has a valid email address within ServiceNow. So there's different uh, stock room types that can be created when you're creating a stock room. That type's going to depend on that individual use case. Um, but there's really two important characteristics of the stock rooms, and that's the priority, which is the order of the stock room the parts should be sourced from. So for example, if you have a personal stock room, or as it's on the slide here, a field agent stock room, um, it has a priority of two. And say that contains the part, um, the required part, that personal stock room is going to get priority over, say, the central warehouse because it has a higher, uh, higher priority. So when it's sourcing your parts, it's going to source from the field agent stock room first instead of the central stock room. Um, and the other field that's important is the shipment field. And that really tells the system of transfer order needs to be created when that part or uh, part is sourced from that stock room. So for example, if a part's in a personal stock room and doesn't require shipments, so then you don't really need a transfer order. So now I'm going to jump into a Xanadu instance and show you how to create a stock room. Okay, so now I've logged into my Xanadu instance and I've gone to the hardware asset workspace. So from the hardware asset workspace, we're gonna to want to go to inventory and from here, we're gonna be able to go to all stock rooms. And so what I wanna do now is I want to create a new stock room for um, one of the Toronto, Ontario in Canada offices. So I'm gonna click on the new button. And here's where I'm gonna to wanna to give it a name. And I wanna be a little bit more specific about this because uh, it's at a specific floor on a building in Toronto. So we are gonna put third floor stock room, uh, Bloor Street office. 
So this is telling me that this is the stock room is the third floor stock room in the Bloor Street office. And it's more specific because I have more than one stock room in this building. So I'm going to name them appropriately so I can easily identify the different stock rooms in this building. So here's where I want to pick a location in the presentation. Remember I mentioned location hierarchy and I do have some location hierarchy set up in my instance. You might not have the same thing, but again, I want to make sure this is attached to a valid location. So I'm going to come in here to North America. And as I said, this is in Canada and it's in Ontario and it's in Toronto. And here is the Bloor Street office location. I'm going to give this a um, uh, assignment group. So the assignment group in this case is the help desk. They're the ones who use this. Um, and this is an actual warehouse. If you remember the types of, of uh, stock rooms we talked about, this is actually a warehouse stock room because it's my main stock room for this office. Um, and I'm going to give this a manager. And I know the manager for this particular area is John Smith. And I can see here already that it does have an, it does have an email address, which is really important for all of those um, rules, et cetera, that get set up. Um, we're not really gonna worry about hours of operation. That is something else you could set up if you needed to uh, for stock rooms. We're not gonna really get into that um, in this video. And we can see here we've got we get description so we can say you know maybe we'll copy this and we can maybe say primary stock room for this building and then these are some other things that come with um, distribution channels and service locations as part of ham this is a ham feature only so if you have base asset management you won't see these things just like hours of operation you won't see if you have base base asset management um, and again these are just settings you can set um, whether you want to exclude them from distribution channels or service locations again watch those videos to find out more about that um, and then we can specify if any pickup tasks or whether it's an external, but neither one of these apply because it's a, a internal com, a stock room to my company. And so I can just hit save here. And now I can see the full stock room uh, UI here where I can actually see if there's any stock rules associated with it. Um, we don't have any tasks associated with this one today. We can actually see task timelines, if there's anything like transfer orders or et cetera, um, that would show up potentially on this stock room. Um, we can see anything else, hardware assets, consumable assets, bundles, et cetera, that may be associated with this particular stock room. But again, remember this is a new stock room, so it doesn't really have anything and then service locations, distribution channels, and audits, etc. So these are all the details you can typically see on your form uh, for your stock rooms. So that's how you create a stock room using the hardware asset workspace. So in today's video, we defined stock room fields and their types, and we demonstrated how to create stock room using the hardware asset workspace in a Xanadu instance. So for more information on this topic, you can go to the ServiceNow product documentation site and there's a really good um, section for managing stock rooms and it's gonna take you through a whole bunch of different um, things about stock rooms. You can also take a look at our YouTube channel. So the Ask a Ranger Hardware Asset Management playlist. And we've got quite a few videos there using stock rules for inventory control, configuring service locations, the setup of management, and understanding distribution channels and implementation. I hope you found today's video useful and I'll see you in the next one.